Good morning, I'm Susan Acott, I'm the Chief Executive here at East Kent and with me I've got two intensive care specialists that I'm now going to introduce this morning, Yvonne, would you introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Yvonne, Ward Manager in Intensive Care. I'm Anna Riley, I'm the Nurse Educator in Intensive Care. So uh, this is a, a chance just to have a bit of a conversation really, but I don't think any conversation at the moment can start without us talking a bit about COVID and your, particularly as you're in, in intensive care and what your experience has been, and particularly now between the first and, and second waves. So Anna, can I just start with you? Can you just tell me a little bit about what, what it's been like for you in terms of this year? So really it started off in February time, just prior to us getting the um, first patients in the hospital, getting to learn about this new virus and then from that talking to A&E and getting working together, getting guidelines on admissions, what the nurse is to expect, so easy steps to follow on admission to make everybody safe on transferring, whether that be from the ward or from A&E. Because we didn't really have any evidence no, or no. we didn't really know we were dealing no, with No, we didn't, moment, but we were so. sort of learning from Italy, learning from China, and therefore just make, making sure that we wanted everybody to be safe. So having designated routes so everybody knew, informing, we were having regular safety huddles on the unit every day saying this is what would happen obviously learning how to um, put your mask on correctly making sure that they were fit correctly making sure you knew how to put your gowns on take them off correctly just getting everything together having regular meetings meetings with an infection control team with all the consultants and then just cascading it down to all grades of stuff. Communication and teamwork yeah. seems to have, particularly as we didn't really know what we were yeah. dealing with to, to start with, so people using their expertise and yeah. wisdom acquired through their professional careers. Just say a little bit, bit about just how you made that communication and teamwork really count. Well, we started off, we've got, we've got a whole unit WhatsApp group, so all areas had mobile phones. We had set lots of safety huddles. We then obviously we went into theatres. Theatres kindly gave up their theatre, so we had an intensive care in theatre. So we were liaising with all the theatre staff, the wards. We were liaising with A and E, and we used to go round and just speak to either the matrons or the managers, and then that would get cascaded. It was a very good team morale, and we all seemed to be working together because. We didn't know what to, to expect. I have to say, your team spirit was palpable. Mm, and yeah. in terms of you mentioned WhatsApp, I can tell you the yeah. entire NHS has been on run <laughs> yes. on WhatsApp in the last year, actually. Mm. And Yvonne, can you just tell us a little bit about the difference for you between the first and second wave? Well, I wasn't here on the first wave because I was shielding, and that was difficult mm, I bet. because you you're at home and you're thinking about your colleagues, um, what they're going through, you know, how difficult it was. And I am not the kind of person who can do nothing. So I then started doing things from home. Okay. I was doing health and safety. I then started to do appraisals from home. Brilliant. And I was doing interviews from home. So I needed to be involved. I realised what they must have been going through, but not being there and actually experiencing it myself. But it was hard in the fact that they were there and I wasn't. Oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah. Must have been very, very that difficult. That was very difficult. Yeah. Especially in terms of ITU, because that's about really intense working um, yes. and collaboration. Absolutely. Did you feel quite isolated? I did, I did, because not only was I isolated from my colleagues, I was also isolated from family. Mm. So I just needed something to do. And mm. luckily, I was able to do a lot from home. Yeah. I think I worked more yeah. from home than I would if I was at <laughs> at work yes. I put in more hours I think yes yes yeah. and the second wave the second wave when I came back and at the time when I got back I was in August so we didn't have many COVID patients so I was able to go into some of the areas we were still wearing full PPE mm. and having to do that just made me appreciate what these girls have been doing and boys rather oh, yeah, yeah. have been doing all these months because it was really hard um, the heat, uh, particularly in the summer. The was heat, terrible. yes. Yeah. And, you know, whereas for me, I could go in and come out and 
to understand and appreciate the fact that they were in these units for, for several hours. Yeah. So it was, it was difficult. My issues now is trying to protect not only myself but others as well because for me now we know this very absolutely is quicker yeah mm. and I'm now I'm not shielding I'm staying at work mm. it's not that difficult to actually I feel to protect myself I just have to be aware of what's around me do the usual things the hand washing and I clean everything down and when I wear my mask and I wear these masks. You must be very proud of your team. I'm so proud. No, I, just, I can't just... tell you how proud I am. From band 8A all the way to band 2, we, they are fantastic. Mm -hmm. They are such a good team yeah. and they support each other. If somebody's mm. obviously got upset, they're there, they support one another. Um, it must be really I, important for you to support your teams as well. But Absolutely. I was going to say that I started in this hospital on the first night it opened. Oh, really? I was at work, yes. And this team that we have now is one of the best teams that, that I've worked with. Mm. You know, they're just marvellous. And you, Absolutely. Can, you can compare and contrast them if you were, I can. If you yeah. were one of the first through the door. Yeah. Mm. Impressive, yeah, I didn't know that yeah. yeah, Yeah, it's been, a, it's been a tough, obviously, tough how many months now? Mm. Like eight, nine months. But yeah, I think we wouldn't have been able to get through it if it wasn't for the team. The team's yeah, really yeah. important and, now, isn't and it? they know they can phone the band sevens. Like we obviously we got busy during last night, and I, I was on the phone to them at one o'clock this morning, um, giving advice. So we all take turns. They can phone. And Anna, we were saying earlier that obviously from the first wave, you know, yes. you had a lot of adrenaline yeah. and lots mm. of we had lots of very visible support. Yes. But I guess it's this has all turned into a, a complete drag for everybody yes. in terms I mean, of now a second wave. How how are you keeping everybody going now? So making sure that people are having annual leave, are having downtime, trying to look at the the off duty so they're not doing more than two days in a row unless it's their preference to do that. It's going to be a long winter, isn't it? Yes, so it's I going to be a long winter. I think that's quite important. Um, knowing that they can come to the senior team at any time. Knowing that our doors are always open and we've had, I've had lots of conversations, I think all the band mm. sevens have, have had lots of difficult conversations with people, how they're feeling, so just so they can share. You, you've encouraged people to talk. Yes, yes, yes definitely. And, Very. and if they need extra support, signposting them to wherever that might be. And you've got your brand new unit yes, as well. Yes, yes. Tell that, me a little bit about your unit, Yvonne. The unit, when I first walked into it, well, wow, this is just... This is just brilliant um, it looks really spanking new and all the ventilators all set up everything was just really really nice it's light it's airy and I think just being down there as a, as a nurse would boost your morale anyway just because of the area that it's in and how nice it is how well laid out it is and you've got your four bays um, it's eight bay unit but you've got four bays where, you know, you've got like a little team in that bay and you've got a little team yeah. in there. Which I must say, Anna, I, when, when I went to see it, I thought, you know, obviously I'm not a, I'm not a nurse, but it mm. looked like a very high spec. It looked yes. finished beautifully. Yeah. yeah, that was in 48 hours. That was from the builders going out. I mean, not even 48 hours, 36 hours from the builders walking out to getting that prepared. I mean, mm. we worked hard to get that ready. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I, th I think it's, 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 a, it's a lovely area to work in. Yeah, it's a right morale mm. booster, I yeah. think, actually. Yeah. Just in terms of some of the, you know, you mentioned about the, the way that the I, the new ITU is, is laid out, but can you just say something a little bit about the equipment? Is the equipment particularly different, or is it just a modern mm. version? We've got, the ventilators are all the, the, exactly the same. same, so what we are trying to do is not to have any different equipment, okay. so all the equipment is the same on all three units, so... Canterbury and Margate, so because we we um, help out between all three units if, if we need to, so we try and get the same equipment. Sometimes we have an updated versions like the mm. renal um, therapy machines, they've been updated. So we've got new machines, so we would then do training and then have champion trainers to cascade it. Yeah, and of course it is nearly Christmas, and now we've just been told that it's Tier Four. So yes, yes. yes. It doesn't feel very Christmassy, but no. what, what, what can you do? What, are, what do you do on your unit just to make some, that day a bit of a special day and this period just a little bit special? 
normally on Christmas Day, because I'm working Christmas Day, I choose to work Christmas Day, it's a little bit more relaxed. People feel a little bit more relaxed. It might be very, very busy. And we have got a bit, we've got just a little bit of decoration this year. Not but much. Not much. <laughs> no. <laughs> but you just needed you just needed that to sort of lift the spirits a little bit. It might be and I'm sure this year it's going to be extremely busy. But I think it's the day it's everybody coming together. Definitely. And then the consultants all put them. This has yeah. gone throughout the year, hasn't it? The yes, consultants put money in for a hamper. One for Christmas and one for the new year. Lovely. Well, it's going to be quite a difficult mm, yes. winter, I think. But thank you very much for thank all that you. you've been doing. Thank you for sharing your experience with me. And I do hope you have something a little bit special <laughs> yes. at yes. Christmas. Yes. And uh, it, it's just a little bit different. Um, okay. yeah, it's going to be different. Yeah. Next year. I know. We won't be parties. Christmas yes. I mean, I think that's what I think that's what kept morale in three because obviously we've had so many great Christmas parties. Mm. I, yes. have, I, have, I have, have heard about party. them. I have yes. heard about them. They are legendary. <laughs> I must say, and, and yes. perhaps, yeah. perhaps you could invite me next yeah, year. Yeah, definitely. Yes. We're thinking yeah, when it's yeah. over properly, maybe yeah. having a ball. Yeah, having yeah. a ball. Got to look forward to something. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yvonne and Anna, thank you very much thank for sharing, sharing that with me, and you cheered me up at the thought of a summer ball. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank, thank you. you.